Yo. Hey. Can you hear me? You listening to Hashtag. W-A-W. What a week. Yeah, yo. What a week. Week. Eita hola. It's April, and we'd like to say sorry. Sorry that your friend didn't win any money in the Powerball. Sorry that that annoying colleague is not quitting or changing departments or radio stations. Sorry that that politician you might or might not like hasn't handed herself in yet. We are glad, though, that you did survive the April Fool shenanigans and that you joined us again. So welcome back to Wow, What a Week. This is... Wow! What a week. What a week. You can't make this shit up. Our comedian guest is in the building. There's a creator of DJ mixes who's known as your mama's favorite DJ. Well, our next guest has a similar title because, according to him, he's apparently his mama's favorite comedian and her favorite singer, too. Thankfully, there's a number of others who also like his work, which is why it was easy for us to ask him to come over. Please give a wow welcome to comedian Kitty Pony Mulauzi. My dude. How you doing, Tato? I <laughs> cannot. You well? Thank you very much. As you were talking about the April sorry, I, I figure I thought like IFP having a their president that has passed on Marcus Putele is in the election poster. I thought that was an April Fool's joke, but it's not. The posters are still there. You know, I saw <laughs> I thought it was a prank. I thought it was a joke, but I'm like, how do you have a a dead person on your poster, you know, like it's so weird, you know what I mean? But when Madiba is on a poster, you don't complain. No, not really. But with with Mango City, it's so weird, you know, because remember uh, during the local government elections, Mango yeah. City, he was like, I think it was like ninety four. Sure. He was saying things that didn't make sense, like uh, our future plans. Ah, uh, I'm like, how are you gonna make future plans if you're not gonna be there? Oh wow! <laughs> wow, what a week! <laughs> You know what I love the most about the IFP? Yeah. Is that slogan. Mm. Trust us. I know, right? <laughs> Do you think I trust condoms will endorse them at some point? Yeah. Even, uh... <laughs> you know, you know. I act like you didn't think about it. <laughs> no, no. It's not even that I didn't think about it. I just think it's very bold and it's very... If you don't trust us, you're on your own. I know, right? But trust us. <laughs> Just vote and trust us. No ways, no ways. I'm good, man. So who are you voting for? If you are voting. I don't know. I'm voting for Nadeko. <laughs> vote Nadeko. <laughs> vote <laughs> Nadeko. <laughs> Yo, that gag, man. That gag is so, is so viral. Now, yeah. now, that's a gag you did about 100 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it still follows you around. I don't know. Not even 100, like 102 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It still follows me around. It's a funny gag about uh, Obama Khambata. There's a political party in the KZN. Yes. Like, the guy's voice made me vote for him. You know, forget the Nadeko policy. His voice made me vote for, for yes, him. Yes, sir. He has this voice that's a dick. Like, you know, I was in Devon in the ICC doing a gig there. He was out, out there, like, at the back of a back. He going, Vote in the Vote! Vote in the I'm like, yo, my man, when I'm going to vote in voice, you're going to Baba. In the Teco! It's a new series! I'm like, Kotlan, I'm saying, Baba, if voice is right. But the problem with that voice is that I flew back to Joburg. It was stuck in my head the whole day. Vote in the Vote! <laughs> I'm sure you got home and said to your woman, Baby, you horny. <laughs> you horny. Vote like, Lee Sand. <laughs> I'm going to send a little clip. I'm going to send a little clip. But the funny thing about that voice is that later on when you're playing at a gig tonight, it's yeah. going to be stuck in your head. You'll be playing. Vote Lee Sand. That voice is so stuck in my head. And it's still stuck in my head. In fact, I am uh, playing in uh, Maboneng tonight. Okay. Uh, at Cosmopolitan. Oh, that's a dope. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So I'll be saying the Votely Asylum. Vote! Votely Asylum! What's your take on um, on uh, illegal Im- immigrants being able to get the ref accident funds? Uh, apparently, if you are an illegal immigrant and you're in accident, you can claim as well. You know what? You know, as much as you are illegal, mm. 
but you're in the country again. And you still got and, the and, rights. And, and you're spending money again. I agree. Uh, so you're a taxpayer, whether you're paying tax officially or not. Mm -hmm. uh, the things you're buying there, you become a taxpayer. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if the system <laughs> has made it easy for you to get into the country. Yeah, yeah. And then there's an accident. Uh. Why should you not benefit like anyone else? You're right. And you're right. Fix the system that allows people that are so porous that allow, allows people in here so easily. Then maybe <laughs> we wouldn't have half those problems. I know. I fully, fully agree on you on that one. You know? Vote! You see that, that voice is stuck in my head now. Vote to the You see, I shouldn't have done that gag. Now I'm stuck here. <laughs> So I am literally dealing with jet lag because I just came in from China. Oh, awesome, awesome, um, awesome. Uh, what, six hours ahead of us, time zone-wise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one thing I appreciated about China mm. is that, one, you know, you almost have this picture in your mind that, mm -mm. you know what I mean? Mm -mm. Yo, the place is clean, shit works. Like... Literally everything happens on your smartphone. What? I didn't see anyone spending cash. Everything's on your smartphone. You get to a parking uh, lot. The camera takes a picture of your number plate. You drive in, it lets you in. When you leave, you scan a barcode at the thing. It lets you out. I had, I had everything. A, I'm not even surprised. I had a very weird story. Apparently, yeah. if you're gonna jaywalk on the freeway, go M1. There yeah. are cameras that will take a picture of you, and they know where and they give you a fine, and then you gotta pay the fine. In, Apparently, the technology is so is so advanced. In, in fact, I remember driving. We were driving from Shanghai International Airport yeah. to where we were staying. Mm. You know, we're on this freeway for almost an hour and a half, uh -huh. but we're not arriving. That's how huge this place is. What? We drove for about an hour and a half. Wait, driving. was there traffic or it was smooth? No, it was smooth, but also there was no one speeding. Like, no one was speeding. No one. <laughs> because apparently the, 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 the demerit system is so strict. Mm -hmm. If you speed, a camera gets you, they come up to you. They, they take the license. No, no. Uh, obviously, you lose yeah, the, the points. Uh, yeah, points so, yeah. And then you lose your license. What? I, 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 think, we should, I think we should take the JPMD for training in China. The system <laughs> works and they don't take shit. I remember my host. Mm -hmm. I, uh, we, were, we, were, we were sitting at his uh, venue mm -hmm. and I offered him one shot. Mm. He says, my man, I can't even take one shot. Because what? there's zero tolerance. Zero. That is so awesome. Like, he's like zero tolerance. Wow. So, so you were in Shanghai, right? I was in Shanghai. Wow, yes. that's amazing. So, what they say about China is true, actually, you know? What? Kore, they, everything works. Like, you know, they, they don't take BS. Like, everything works. If you mess up, they don't mean, they, there's no choice. I'm going to call Trinko China. And, and, and you know, it, <laughs> it, it, it brought me to the big debate that we've been having mm. uh, generally uh, on the continent. Mm -hmm. Is democracy the perfect system for us currently no because i almost feel like democracy is hamstringing a lot of things that should be getting done i agree, I but agree. because when a little process i agree means there's zero process i agree so if you look at rwanda there's like you know less democracy you know but everything works that such so i think maybe for a, for a for a limited period we need something like the system like china so everything can work you know because currently but to what end also, though? Because, you know, some people argue that if you have a benevolent uh, dictator, yeah. a nice guy but who's a dictator, mm. things will work. Often mm. these guys lose their way along the way. Yeah, they just... They become power forever. Forever. Yeah. Uh, Before you know it, Mulaudzi, because he's got an opinion, is in a shallow <laughs> grave somewhere. <laughs> You know what I mean? You're right. You're or, right. Or he's right. being eaten by sharks at the at the bottom of the ocean. So to what? But the big because I don't have the answers. But my question is: Does democracy work for us? I've got a political friend in Lesotho, mm. and he was telling me that you know since the recent coalitions, yeah, yeah, the people are suffering the most. Of course, because like if, of the coalitions. Not, uh, how is how is Alinix? If we should have a city of Joburg as well, same thing because the coalition is look, the city is dirty, you know, like you know, if you go to Newark, there's like two, three levels of debt, you know. Yeah. Because I think democracy in this case, for me, nah, you know what I mean? So I think we need another system, maybe in between democracy and dictatorship. I don't know. But now nah, things are not working. <laughs> But think about it, things are not working because yeah. like even when you get stopped to go with the JPMD, mm -hmm. you know, like they get so disappointed if you're not drunk. <laughs> like you've never seen them. You're like, ah, what our fit, a fit, a fit. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Like, ah, why is your disc up today? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
Buka is like, ah, no, vaya, vaya. It's like they're so disappointed. It's so weird. You see my point, really? Like, like, you know, sometimes democracy is like, I, I don't know. I remember there was a time I was breathalyzed. And yeah. you could tell that this guy, he was in, in the mood. Yeah. You know, when a cop is in the mood, that are you, I'm getting a promotion. And in fact, he, he, he borderline alluded to the fact that, Hadija Fresh, are you? I'm getting a promotion with you. He personalized me. Yeah. And I knew I was fine. Yeah. But I was like, no, come. You know, I passed that thing. Yeah. You could tell he was very disappointed. <laughs> I know. I was like, fuck, there goes my, 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 my promotion. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Even with the, with the, with the SAPS as well. Like, you yeah. know, a police station gets robbed. You're like, what the hell is going on? Sure. Only in a, in a democratic country can that happen. Yeah. Like, a police station gets robbed. You're like, where is Alan? You know, my question is, who opens the case? When a police station gets robbed, is the po- police is the policeman within the police station? Yeah, you must do enough, David, of yourself, <laughs> <laughs> and then we satisfy yourself. What is satisfy? I'm so full case. When Zagali na boko na ngit now, what do you mean when Zagali? I need to now boko na la bas bas bambin You know what I mean? It's so weird. So back to the to 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 the uh, the question. You know, like you know, is democracy the solution? Mm, you know what mm, I mean? Mm. You look at our system. Like you know, nothing works. Like the water infrastructure is collapsing. Sure. Electricity electricity infrastructure is collapsing. It's like everything is collapsing. Yeah. And and then Rune is the resident. You know, we paying more. You know what I mean? I remember when I was younger. Yeah. So my grandfather, mm. so my mother's dad, mm. he was chief of a village mm. uh, just outside Haburoni mm. in Bots. He, mm. So now my mom's brother is the chief. Mm-hmm. And I remember a talk about how my grandfather was very, very stern as a chief, uh-uh. but he was a fair and just man. So things got done. Thank but you. they also knew that he doesn't take shit. But they also knew that, but he's fair. Yeah. In his not taking shit, he, you know what it's like? You know when you're a child yeah. and your parents beat you. <laughs> Especially if you steal their car and go traveling South Africa. <laughs> and, your, no, no, and your parents beat you. Yeah. But you're like, ah, but I, I, I end this beating, I, I end it. I get you, yeah. I get you. <laughs> so apparently he was that kind of guy. Mm. But uh, the advent of democracy and modernization and uh, the, the colonizers uh, civilizing us, yeah. a lot of even in this country, in SA, traditional uh, uh, leaders will tell you how this constitution has taken away a lot of their rights in terms of how they manage land, how they uh, govern their people. And a lot of their powers as well, because I'm from a royal family. My mom and my dad are from royal households. You know? yes, Same sir. thing, like now the ah, residents... So, Tinawa princes must be... Yeah, me. yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> Uh, we are princes. Vote! <laughs> Vote <laughs> But now, like, the, like you know, everything is just, is just so much. But you're right. Maybe you need somebody that stands by that's fair as well. You know what I mean? When it comes to, so maybe when it comes to choosing our leaders, maybe we need to use that, that principle for, like, you know, how do we go about it, you know? But as it is now... But anyway, please, uh, we need your opinions in the comment section. Um, do we need another system? And do you feel democracy is working? Because I think we, we need to actually be realistic that this democracy that is being uh, forced upon us, especially by, by the Americans and other civilized nations, it might not be the best solution. It might us. not be. My, my thing, Tato, is that um, as black people of the country, we don't have the land, we don't have the money. Mm. And it's becoming normal now for us not to have anything. Sure. And it's been 30 years where Arna next, you know, but now it's like, you know, but I think a system will be a system that forces the power that be those with the money and the land to share. You know, we're not saying give us everything, but we're saying share. Mm. But now you find that's generation after generation of poverty. Like if you go to like you know our villages, you find that there's there are girls with like six kids because mm. she knows her if she has six kids, give four clipper, four clipper, four clipper, four clipper. That's her income, and do you know that's a cycle of poverty. That's a vicious cycle of poverty. Do you genuinely believe people are having money for the ground? Yeah, I mean, they're having babies for the ground. Yeah, come come come. No true story. I, I refuse to believe. Think that. about it. If you have ten kids and it's four clipper, it's like how much? It's, it's four thousand a month. It's it's steady income for you. Think about it. A steady income, but those kids cost way more than the four thousand. They're, they're, they're not there yet. Uh, uh, like you know, when it comes to thinking, they're not there. For them, it's like yes, four four grand cash up. But like, but like, it's so? a reality. Wow. I'm te- it's reality. I, uh, I find it difficult to believe. It's reality. So would you rather starve or get the the, the grand money? That's the question because mm. it's either I'm going to starve or I'm going to use those few grants to buy myself uh, food and buy myself drinks. I might take a chance on myself 
and try slightly be inspired to find ways of making money that don't involve now I have must carry ten children. But, but Tato, the people that don't think like me and you, mm. I'll give you an example. So yeah. when you have debt in your car, you sure. don't throw it out the window. You wait until you get a trash bag mm. to throw. But mm. but wako mi kukunda, they just throw it anyway because that's their state of mind. But not they, they're not even thinking about the environment. They're thinking about things that match them. That's mm. food and everything. Mm. But when you're thinking about the environment, they don't care about the environment. Mm. So now somebody that doesn't care about the environment, you know, they just want money. And for me, it's not even about the environment. Mm. It's just buffet. Yeah, and, but and. and and, and you think we're fairly and cleaning up after yourself is instilled in us as children. And it has nothing to do with how much money you have. Yeah. It shouldn't. But Bona, intellectually, they're not there as yet. They, they're not, they, they, they can't think beyond that, you know, because Bona, they, are, they, mm. care, they care about their immediate thing, like, you know, um, presence, you know what I mean? Anyway, mm. so earlier, earlier on we spoke about royalty, about mm. how me and you are princes. Hey, what's uh, up? Uh, <laughs> prince of comedy, <laughs> prince of DJing. Uh, prince of broadcasting. <laughs> uh, speaking of royalty, yeah. uh, it seems like um, Buso Mandela is back in the news. What's going on? Yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a it's a it's an existing story. For yeah. me, as black people, we have this thing where we hand you like if you black. So, so what is the story for those? The that story don't is know that Mbusa Mandela was arrested uh, snorting coke mm. using a two hundred note. You know what I mean? Mbusa Mandela snorts Mandela's uh, grandson. My thing is that. Hey, you know, Mbuso, you're an adult, you can do coke all you want, you know, but why are you forcing your grandfather to also snort the coke? <laughs> uh, for those that don't get the joke, Mandela is also in the 200 note. So, you're, so, you're, you're, so, you're so stupid. <laughs> so, oh, what is this? <laughs> Am I so at, good? Am I back at the quarry? <laughs> Tato, no, no, no. Uh, he, actually, Tato's views belong to him himself. They don't belong to Kidwoni <laughs> Wow. I took it there, but you're like, ah, let's take it a bit further. Listen here, Scotty Pippen. You can't throw me the ball in when I Jordan it to complete. <laughs> Oh my god, it's oh. like yo man, why are you forcing your grandfather to also see the coke? Oh, when's I got a new boat? Then feel the man sent for me. And we say, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> Buso, this one is on you, bro. You're stupid. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, snap. What, what else has caught your attention this week? What else has caught my attention? My mm. mom, man. I yeah. was in Venda, obviously, building sure. my double story house. <laughs> With 20 pillars. My man, is there a tender to make pillars? Because every house in Venda has a pillar. Or twin. <laughs> Yes, I'm waiting to see a house. It's, our, it's our pillar of strength. Tato. I'm waiting to see one house that's just a pillar. <laughs> I think soon you'll see it. My house only got two pillars, but <laughs> oh lord! So, uh, what's in what called my, my mom? You know, my yeah. mom has beef with the neighbors. Sure. You know, like Tato, ne? if mm. you don't want to give me money, I get, even if you have, sure. like, Tato, please give me a few bucks. Like, sure. Laza, can I yeah. That's a polite way of saying no. Sure. Right? Sure. My mom used to do the same thing. Like, when the neighbors are kaku, when mm. they say she'll have meat in the fridge, but sure. when they come through, uh, my mom yes. will say, no, I don't have it. Sure. But that's a polite way of saying no. Yeah. But now, a while ago, she was in between fridges. She didn't have a fridge. Ah. And then she had to put her meat next door. So, I'm going to she can't say no. I don't know. They're like, we can see you have the meat, my blood. <laughs> so now she's beef with the neighbors, you know. So I love home. So home is amazing. Opening, um, so we're opening a hotel at home, you know. Uh, also a, a few farms as well. Because during the, yeah, during yeah. the pandemic, yeah. we had to diversify. So we sure. got a hotel in four ways called our Montelavu oh, Hotel. I thought you diversify by getting a degree in engineering. Oh, hell no. <laughs> No, I, I, I probably know more engineers from Venda than from anywhere else. You know, I, I thought that's how you guys. No, no, no. Or is it for the pillars? Yes, <laughs> the pillars must stand. <laughs> Funny enough, they are telling for ways as pillars as well. <laughs> It was captured. So, but my point is that um, as a comedian, um, you you have to diversify. You know, like if you look at Mashabele, he has a sure. gin, mm. Moringa gin, other products as well. He has, uh, like, you know, some adult products. He got products. Mutosa. He got Mutosa, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, so I think myself as well, you know, we got some few hotel brands. It's called Montilla. Who's we? 
Myself and my childhood friend, Dian Mklava. There's, there's a hotel in Four Ways, Montelavu. So we opening a branch in uh, Kruger National Park. Mo- Montelavu? Montelavu. Oh. Montelavu. It's next to Monte what, Casino. What does it mean? It's co- next to Monte, it's next to Monte Casino. So it's Monte View, Monte Casino View. But uh, we're in the spice in Montelavu. Why did you just come up with an exotic vendor name? <laughs> Because the tourists, uh, international tourists, uh, were going to get confused. You know? But how? I don't know. I guess Montelavu made sense for us because now when the tourists search for Monte Casino, we pop up as the accommodation. Oh, so um, you're piggybacking there yeah, in Monte. Definitely, you know what I mean? Mm. So that's that. And uh, yeah, so we're just getting into I the I could have called it Monte <laughs> I was going to rise up and attract customers. <laughs> <laughs> and the pillars made sense. Oh, oh. Montella Pace with the pillars. With the pillars are standing up. <laughs> Montella and Pace. <laughs> I can't believe this guy invites me and roasts me at his own show. Oh, Monte Lavusa. <laughs> Monte Lavusa. <laughs> Leave me alone, man. I guess I'm not coming here. I can't believe I'm getting roasted. So, so where else can we support you, my guy? Um, so we're doing Soto Comedy Festival in uh, August. Go uh, in, in, uh, like, in Soweto. Yes, sir. We're also doing it at uh, Soweto Theatre in mm. uh, December. And also we're doing uh, East Rand uh, Heavyweight Comedy Festival at uh, Carnival City on July 5th yes, and sir. also this coming weekend we're doing uh, Laugh Africa with Eddie Griffith and uh, other funny guys ah, at yeah. Okay, so you'll be there this coming weekend? Yeah, yeah, I'm there on the 6th So you're there which day? Which day? Uh, the both days, 6th and 7th as well ah, at Centen nice. Convention Center. No, we'll see I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to be coming through so Is I'll, it? See you. I'll see you there. I can't believe, man like, I, I, I can't wait to see you because I saw you do comedy as well at, uh, at uh, Goliath Comedy. Oh, yes <laughs> <laughs> Just for the weekend <laughs> I don't want to love <laughs> Let me change the topic. Votelina <laughs> Deco! <laughs> Maybe I should get in the adult business as well, like Montel and Pace. You know I think I mean? you should. I, I think I should as well. You know Kiribone, I mean? thank you so much for joining us, my dude. Thank you for having me. So how was the gig in, in China, in Shanghai? How, um, was, the, how was the crowd? Sh- how was... Sh- Shanghai was nice. You know what? I've been avoiding gigs where I know I'm going to be playing to Africans yeah. that are homesick. But this one I intentionally took. Because it's not every day you go to China. What was your strategy? Did you play piano? Did you play chrome? Did you play house? What What was your strategy? Uh, knowing that it's a different, it's a different um, crowd. It's a different. Uh, they got different tastes when it comes to music. You no, know, because it was majority our people. Mm. Uh, you know exactly what to play. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. And it's people who are homesick, so you know exactly what to play. So it wasn't even an issue. So for me, it was actually a holiday to just to get away for Easter. And no, no, I got to ask. I was about to ask <laughs> some fake stock. <laughs> Where you were the only thing that was made in South Africa, everything was made in China. You were just going back home. Why in Karab? Tiger Bam. All fresh as if you belong to himself, himself only. Kid, you want this? No, saying whatever. Thanks for having me, Tato. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for uh, outrolling yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, anybody <laughs> Molayozi is about to leave the field. <laughs> and Montelampes, I can't believe you, dog. Montelampes, shut up. That's <laughs> lying. Oh, fuck. This is. Wow! What, what a week. What a week. Celebrity guest. Celebrity guest. Our next guest is a hip-hop head of note with a name that has a bit of a criminal element to it. However, she's really quite a sweetie. She's even worked for a Christian radio station. Hallelujah. As with many others in the media and music fields, she's not quite what she might appear to be and is actually even more. Please give a wow welcome to Madame Loot Love. <laughs> What's up, doll? Hallelujah, indeed. How are you doing, Chris? You are looking amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. So why did you decide on that hairstyle while we're here? Uh, 
I just wanted the short hair back. I'm tired. Yeah, I grew my hair out for a bit. I had an sure. afro. Mm. Um, and I was like, I'm not doing this. This is just too much work. Lots of maintenance between myself and my girls. It's just, it's 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 a lot. So I'm in a new season. So I figured, let me cut my hair again. And now, Absolutely. yeah. Yeah. And also, they must learn. They must they must remember who the hell you are. You know what I mean? They yeah. <laughs> must walk into the room and they're like, oh, yeah. Hell That's yeah. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Raising Twins 101. Um, what, pray? <laughs> yeah. Start your day with prayer. Um, have lots of tequila on deck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You might want to have a shot at 9 a.m. I was going to say for yourself, not for them. Yeah, no, 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 for, for yourself. Yeah. Um, but also just just uh, welcome chaos in your yes, life. Yes. Welcome complete chaos. Um, breaking up fights every 10 minutes. Mm. Um, but all, also like just the, the most amazing relationship and love and the purest form of love actually in your sure. life yeah what, what are you learning yourself on this motherhood journey especially because it's two people yes the hip and hop as they've been called before <laughs> <laughs> they're not R&B but uh, oh, they are R&B now you know what I mean yes. we're in a new era um, what am I learning about myself um, that I'm stronger than I thought I was mm. um, uh, I have stretched in unimaginable ways over the last five, five years mm. um yeah, that actually, I don't know, uh, that I, I'm actually superhuman. Because mm. I literally don't understand how we get through each day sure. um, at times, you mm. know. Mm. Um, and, and, and I'm actually more patient than I thought I was. Sure. And I'm learning that I'm quite feisty. Mm. I've mm. got a lot of attitude. Mm. Um, very opinionated. Mm. Because I argue with myself or two versions of myself every single day. Sure. And then I'm also quite sensitive. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, but also, I've got a big heart. I'm a big lover. But you're also raising two little people who are now at a stage where they also have attitude. Exactly. They also have opinions. And that's why I'm like, oh, so this this is who I am. They know what they don't want to wear today. Literally. They know what they don't want to eat. Yeah. Like, for instance, me growing up, you eat what your mom has made or you're not eating the whole day, basically. And there's none of that in this time. When she says she doesn't want bro like broccoli, then there's nothing you can do. You have yeah. to negotiate. You Absolutely. have to try to trick her into it. Mm. If it doesn't work, most of the time I just say, okay, cool. Well, what do you want to eat? Sure. Then it's a peanut butter sandwich. Cool. That's what we're having for dinner. I'm not doing this with you. Yeah. I've done this with you all day. <laughs> I'm right. I'm done. Do you want chips for dinner? Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Next, no problem. Let's sure. do it. Yeah, you as long as you're happy. Yeah. Can, and then we'll go to bed. We'll be okay. In fact, you know what? Let's go to Disney World right now if that's what you want. You know? uh, no, but <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> still a plus a mom. <laughs> Would you say how you've learned to negotiate with two little people put you in an advantage renegotiating a radio contract? <laughs> 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 because often radio managers behave like five-year-olds. Uh, whoa, no? well, that's a bit intense. Okay. I just got here. I just got back. I'm, I don't want no. I don't want drama. Okay. I just got. I just arrived. <laughs> you've done this. You know. You you've done this. I, I, I just got here. Yeah. It definitely has put me in a better place to negotiate with people. Mm. I really have more patience with people. I'm sure. more empathetic. I understand people more. Um, I'm not as reactive as I used to be. Mm. Um, I also just don't feel like I need to constantly fight sure. uh, to, for people to hear me or validate me. Mm. I know my value and if something doesn't make sense, I'm really okay with saying no. Sure. Um, so, so in a sense, it did. It did, you know, because I've been in a place where I had an offer the year before and it didn't fit. Sure. It didn't make sense. Sure. And I wasn't scared to say no. Mm. You know, I should have said yes, you know, because, mm. you know, the economy is the I, economy. I was going to say it's a year later. But at that time, I literally was like, this doesn't fit. This doesn't sure. make sense. And sure. so I'm going to say thank you for reaching out, but this mm. is not for me. Um, maybe we'll try again another time. And they did, actually. Because I, I sometimes when I'm having a disagreement with a person mm -hmm. or people, I often remind myself that majority of us are actually just still children that learn to behave yes. in public. Yeah. We're and all that, essentially kind of like toddlers. And, and that's... That's how you must sometimes treat people. Exactly. But you must remember that this is a petulant adult. Yeah. Because there's still a child there that wants things that way. A hundred percent. And also just cook. give someone the grace yeah. to be themselves, to sure. feel the emotions that they feel, to mm. be upset, to throw a tantrum, but also yeah. give yourself the grace to stand up for yourself as one in the same breath. So, Absolutely. Yeah. One thing about children, they, they'll help you just tone it down, humble you a little, yeah. a lot, actually. Yeah. I get yeah. humbled every day, mm. mostly in the first 10 minutes of waking up. <laughs> 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 There's nothing like a morning routine sure. to just sort you out. Mm. Just negotiating, brushing teeth, outfits, having 
breakfast, getting out the house, mm. hair, just wow. You know what I appreciate about the parenting routine, mm-hmm. especially in the morning, mm-hmm. for me personally, is it's almost like you know the tasks that you need to get done. Yeah. And then you need to get into the routine of those tasks. Mm-hmm. You need to get into the discipline. Because there are days where even as a parent, you, I don't want to do this today. Literally. I don't want to wake Literally. up. Literally. Like, I don't want to cook for these little people. Mm. In fact, I love them, but I think they're horrible human beings. <laughs> there's, there's all of that that you deal with as a parent. Yeah. But what I'm finding, though, is the discipline of creating routine for your kids mm-hmm. also disciplines you. 100%. And you're then able to do more yeah, because and be you, more disciplined. Because you learn the art of showing up. Absolutely. Whether you want to or not, whether you're in the mood or not. Yeah. Um, and it really it really goes into the rest of your life, your work life, I guess, in some cases, your love life. But just that learning how to wake up when you don't want to yes. will change your whole life. Absolutely. It really will. Absolutely. I'm trying to learn now how to wake up much earlier so that I have time alone. Yes. So I'm trying to get into a place where I wake up at 5 a.m. so that I just center before they wake up at six because I'm not a morning person I'm just like I'm, I'm horrible I'm horrible I'm not trying to talk to anyone before like 12 noon but I've got kids so that won't work trust me it'll change your life yeah because I'm at gym at 5, 5 in the morning yeah and it's me time yes and I don't have to worry about who doesn't want what for breakfast literally literally <laughs> you know what I mean it's the and, best and, yeah and, and, and the thing is also because with co-parenting when it's when they're over at your place, mm-hmm. it's your load yes. that you have to deal with. But you yeah. also have to be selfish about, I still need my me time. You, you Even if it means my me time, me time is when they are asleep. Yes, you definitely need your yeah, me time. Yeah. If, if there's a thing that every parent should have is time away, silence. Quiet Even time. if they are like sitting alone, sitting watching a movie and you sit in a different room and they don't disturb you in that time, yeah. mm-hmm. if you can find it, t- do it. It'll literally keep you sane. And have them understand that this is my quiet time. Yeah. Unless the house is burning. Yes. And if you've burnt it, then you'll have hell to pay. But unless the house is burning, don't, don't. I'm trying to teach my girls about a mommy moment. They, yeah. they don't care yet, though. They're just like, okay. What about they think like, moment? okay, mommy moment. Two seconds later, like, mommy, this is what we need. I'm like, baby, mommy's having her mommy moment. And they're like, okay. Okay, so can I? And I'm like, babies, yeah. please. I need that. But they're still young, so it's okay. They'll get into into the routine. But it's very important to have your time alone as a parent. It really, really is. Sure. Mm. Now, you've been thrust literally back into our faces. Into the thick of things. Going into, <laughs> you know, mainstream prime time radio. Mm-hmm. And this is from being away for a while. Yeah. Surely comes with some sort of anxiety. A lot of anxiety. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm yeah. so overstimulated because mm. I've been, you know, safe in my safe space, kind of isolated from everyone, perfectly okay. Cocooned. With with the pace of my life, right? Yeah. And now I'm back into it. I'm 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 having conversations. I'm I'm actually relearning how to do interviews. Sure. Um, I'm in my head a lot about it. Mm. Um, but I'm also quite an expressive person, and I know the systems I need to to kind of like survive. So you know, I'll journey a lot. Um, mm. I cried it out last night because I just felt like, whoa, this is Jesus. this feels very big. Mm. Um, and it I is, guess... It is, and it is big. Yeah, and yeah. knowing what I know and the experience that I have of how mm. crazy and, and, and chaotic and mm. how quickly things can change, I kind mm. of also have my own little fears of like, I want to get this right this time. Not that I didn't get it right the last time, but sure. you know, I just... What's your, I biggest, want... what's your biggest fear right now? In fact, what triggered the tears last night? What triggered the tears is... oh. Um, I think a big a big part of it was first of all I have a second chance at this mm. um, and that in itself is a big deal because we know how the industry is right once you go quiet for long enough yeah. it can be forever in fact majority of people will never even get the first chance exactly you're getting a second I'm getting a second chance yeah. um, and so that was the first thing the second thing was you know, I really want to make sure that I balance this out with my girls. Sure. You know, it's very important to me that they don't feel like they're losing their mom oh, yes. in this new wave. Uh, I really want to take them with me and, and, and have them enjoy this with me and experience it with me. Mm. Um, I mean, the beginning is going to be a bit difficult already, you know, the separation anxiety. It's, mommy, you're at work again. What do you mean? Mm. You have to do this and you have to do that. They don't really understand the concept. But also, I just... 
do not want to lose myself again. Mm. You know, you lose yourself in this industry. Sure. You know, everybody else is making decisions for you for mm. the first, I don't know, eight, nine, ten years. They're pulling you in different mm. directions. Um, you may have a strategy, you may have a team, but everything rests on everyone else. You kind of just, you're this package sure. that they sure. put on a shelf and sell to everyone. So it's really important to me this time around to, to not get so lost in it mm. that I lose my sense of Lutando. You say you don't want to get lost in it again. Mm -hmm. How badly did you get lost in it previously? I mean, so badly. I'm an R&B girl now. (laughs) 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 I'm just, you know, (laughs) just give it like all the slow stuff. Um, And you know what? It was just part of my my journey. Mm. Uh, it was just part of my growth. I mean, I, I actually actively made a decision to just switch everything off. Sure. At the time, I didn't know why I was doing it. It didn't really make sense. I just felt like I'm just, it's too much. There's mm. too much noise. There's too much happening around me. I'm not in control. I don't know who I am. I can't tell you what I like, what I don't like. I, this is just too much for me. And fortunately for me, that flip happened when I just had kids. So I kind mm. of had an excuse and a way to disappear. I was just like, no, I'm learning how to be a mom. Just give me some time. Mm. And and then it just became, uh, I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. Sure. I don't know if this is actually my path. I don't know if this is the journey I'm supposed to be on. But I also don't know what I want to do. Mm. So I just shut down. I shut mm. down. It mm. was it was wild. Um, but it worked out. Mm. Yeah. You say you could have come back to radio a year ago. Mm. And that in hindsight, maybe you should have because the economy is slow. Mm-hmm. How have you been putting food on the table? How have I been putting food on the table? God's grace. Mm. <laughs> Literally God's because, grace. Because our, our, industry God's is, grace. Is, is, our industry is thankless. Yeah. And often when you're on your own, you're on your own. And I literally was. Yeah. I literally was. Like between myself and the community around me, my friends, mm. um, I cannot tell you how we got through each day. And last year was literally the worst part of it where I was like, okay, mm. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. I don't know what I'm going to do with my babies. Um, but you know, when, when, when God decides to sit you down and shows you that he's God, then, you know, I guess you learn that in, in moments of desperation, help will come. Mm. You'll get what you need. Mm. Not, not really what you want, but you'll get what you need to get you through. Isn't it crazy how when the chips are down or you feel like the certain things that are not making sense Mm -hmm. or that you need like you say Mm -hmm. it somehow works out it does it's the the weirdest thing it's I think when you also surrender and you let go and you let go of the ideas that you have of what your life should look like or I want to have this now you just go back to basics Mm. and you accept the position that you're in I think Mm. that's that was the biggest part of it is just accepting that my chips are down Mm. I'm here now I don't know what to do Mm. I don't know how I'm going to get through this at this moment I can only pray at this moment I can only cry at this moment this is what I can do to distract my kids Mm. this is the only thing we can have today and then that's it that's Mm. it once you get to that place of acceptance I think you open yourself up to God's actual plan and not what you think you should be doing in your life. Sure. Yeah. So you went to the design school of SA, right? Yeah, but I didn't graduate. Um, mm. May I finish my question? Sorry. And for, <laughs> Sorry. For, for, for money reasons, you were not able to sit your final exams, right? Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. had to go home. Mm-hmm. What stopped you going home this time? Um... I knew that if I go home, I'm not coming back. Mm. I knew that if I go home, I'm not coming back. Mm. Um, and so I just had to, I had to fight. Mm. This is literally the city of dreams. This mm. is the place where everything happens. This is the place where, although in some seasons, you know, you can't call that one person to sure. pull you through. Sure. As long as you're here, you have a fighting chance. Mm. The further away you are from Joburg, the harder it becomes, sure. you know. Um, and so I just, I just had to trust I just had to trust God. I, I felt crazy. I mm. still feel crazy. Mm. But in a sense, it's actually working out. I mean, I had like no business saying no to a job last year. Sure. But I knew it wasn't the right job. Sure. It wasn't the right fit for me. Mm. So I guess to a certain extent, I was willing to go hungry mm. in order to wait for the thing that I know is right. Mm. Um, and that's a bit wild to say. <laughs> but it, it really is... 
it's, I guess it was the best decision for me at the time. That's wild to say, but it's also your story to tell in yeah. a, a, you know, a position that you took. Hmm. And um, I often find that turning down the fit that doesn't work for you often prepares you for an even more perfect fit. Yeah. Is what I found in my life. Yeah. That I've turned down uh, like great opportunities. Yeah. yeah. And looked back and said, flip, maybe that was a bad idea. Yeah. But a year later you realize that actually no, had I done this, that wouldn't have happened. Hundred percent. This door wouldn't have opened. And sometimes, you know, desperation is, is dangerous. Mm. And we de- we get desperate. We get mm. very desperate. I mean I'm a parent, so you know, there's certain things I just can't afford to not do. Sure. Um but sometimes Again, if you're willing to 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 go hungry, mm-hmm. just to understand and learn your value, mm-hmm. then the reward is, is is greater. Sure. Now, your manager and stylist are powerhouses in the industry, mm-hmm. and both are capable. They hold their own. How do you pick your team? How do you pick who you surround yourself with? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, for the longest time, have kind of not really had a team, mm. but I would work with people on the way. Sure. Um, and with the person that I'm working with now, with Kels, uh, we've worked together before. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't even explain how we got back together, um, but she is the one person that just mm. gets it. Sure. And so also, you know, with, with the manager, you need somebody that you can be vulnerable with, that you can be open with, that you can be honest with, um, that you can trust, you know, to, to lead you in situations who also won't shut you down. Um, and she's just that person. She's a ride or die. She's a ride or die. Um, and yeah, she's just the perfect fit for right now, mm. especially mm. with the things that I've learned about what I need. And also, it doesn't help that a lot of managers, even A and R's at record labels, you almost feel like they want to be you or they want to mm. be on the red carpet with you. Yes. Versus, I'm a ghost. Yes. No one should know me. Yeah. But they should know that I get you done. Hundred percent. It's very rare. It's very mm. rare to find that. It's very rare to find somebody who is literally willing to fall back into the background. Mm. Um, and I'm also just for. I want you to be amazing as well, right? Sure. On your own. I mm. also want you to shine. Mm. I also want you to 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 be amazing. To have other clients. Mm. Um, but I also want to know that. I'm your star. Sure. That you're willing to let me shine, mm, and she definitely mm, does that. Mm, mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mustn't feel like I'm competing with the rest of the roster. 100%. 100%. And, 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 and I think managers that get the roster right get people that never have to compete for a single job. Literally. But also, if you know what you want as mm, well, mm. Um, as talent. Sure. A lot of the time, as talent, we also don't know what we want. Mm. And so a manager can only do so much. Mm. They can't help you if you don't know what you want. So mm. I, I definitely think now I know what I want and I'm able to to lead with sure. her. Mm. Now, I've known you for what, what, 14 years almost? I think so. And there's never a time I see you and you have a hair out of place. I've never seen you in a... I'm sure those are pyjamas, Moomin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with Kalamine lotion wearing a, a gown <laughs> and a towel wrapped around her, her, her waist. I mean, 2017, you won a style award. Yeah. Do you find you guys, as in women, are under pressure to always step right, to always not have a hair out of place? Always. Definitely. Definitely. It's, especially as uh, TV presenters. We always have to be on mm. every day, mm. all the time. Um, but I think, you know, it depends on you. I mean, I'm definitely not going to go buy bread with a full face beat. Like, mm-hmm. the, guys are with the, the guys in the shop. But it also helps that you complex. look good without a face beat also. So. Yeah, but yeah. I also just think it's like, it's like a personality thing. Sure. What are you comfortable with? Mm. How secure are you in yourself, right? Mm. Like, there's a lot of people who've seen me on my off day. Sure. But... You know, you're not going to see me uh, in the way that people at home see me. (laughs) Like, my mom knows me, knows me. Do you know what I mean? My kids know me. My friends know me, know me. And it's like, I don't have to put that version on, which I really, really appreciate. So you're quite Mm. selective about where you put it on and where you switch it on. Mm. Um, But again, you know, I've I've been quite away from everyone. So I'm quite comfortable Mm. in off loot. I'm actually having to relearn now how to be be presentable on on loot. I'm Mm. like, eesh. This is a bit weird. Here I feel we so again. strange. I'm a bit uncomfortable, <laughs> but you know what? Here we go again. How do you deal with and feel about the fact that, again, it's always women 
who are compared to one another. Mm. You, you hardly ever see it with men in, yeah. the, in the industry. Yeah. But with women, it's always, oh, she's hotter, or she does a better job, mm-hmm. or she's got a nicer palm, mm-hmm. or but mm-hmm. her wigs uh, suck, or this one has better wigs. I mean, the other day, uh, there was a video of uh, Tyler doing a pop-up at uh, Mall of Africa. Yes. And then Jiggy Jiggy Bonang is trending because someone is like, yeah, she's bigger than Bonang. I was like, but this has nothing to do with Bonang. Literally, it doesn't. I think, unfortunately for us, it's just a thing that's always going to happen. Yeah. You know, we're always going to be uh, compared with each other, put up against each other. Um, but we, as women, you know, I think I, I show a lot of love and I appreciate a lot of women in the game. Mm. Um, and if you're going to put me next to, like, an icon like Bonang, I'm going to take it because mm. she's, she's incredible. She's mm. amazing. So mm. if you're making that comparison, you're putting me in a really high pedestal in mm. a really beautiful place. At least that's how I see it. I would prefer mm. people not to. Sure. But it's part of the conversation and it comes with the territory, right? Mm. Obviously, you don't want to pull Bonang into something she's not involved in, but that sure. also speaks volumes about who she is to her, us her, her and where we see her, her and her yeah. clout. Yeah. You know, yeah. even when she's minding her own business, doing her own thing, mm. she's on the timeline. Mm. You know, so work with it I guess you don't like it but it's it's just part of the game you as a kid you're compared to everybody else mm. you know um, it's not the best thing but also I guess as women we're doing enough to give a lot of people uh, 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 meat or for, something for, for to, to yes yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. know no shade to the gents in the game y'all need to step up a bit <laughs> oh, I'm trying oh. <laughs> Don't these colors bring out my eyes? <laughs> they do. There's even a zip for and no reason. And I'm proud. There's even a zip for no reason. You know what I mean? That's here. right. I see the nails <laughs> as well, you know? You I must, love that. You must make an effort. It, and, and that's the thing. Like yeah. We want to see the gin step up too. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. We must always just look like we're going to buy bread. Please don't. And then someone said, do you want to play a set quickly? Please. While you're out there. <laughs> like, we show up looking like we walked off a runway and you guys in your soccer, I don't even know what. Uh, and that's no. your plus one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please uh, try a little, just a little. But I think, you know, the gents are trying, and yeah, and yeah we love to see it. I, I want to take you back uh, to when you're at the design school. Mm. And um, there's money issues, you can't write your exams, you have to go home. Mm-hmm. Take us through the emotions of that time in your life. The biggest heartbreak of my life, I would say. Mm. Um, I really, really loved what I was doing. I was studying interior design, and... It just felt like my whole world fell apart, Mm. you know. Um, I I just had no other plan outside of that. I didn't think of anything else. I just had one vision. This was it. I had a plan to, when I've graduated, move to New York for three years. After moving to New York, I was going to go to Dubai for three years. I just, I had it all mapped out. Mm. Um, And when I had to go back home, it just felt like... Although it wasn't my fault, I just felt like I failed, you know. Mm. Um, and I also had to sit and watch my friends graduate, oh, which yes. was very, very difficult. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and fortunately for me, you know, I've got a very strong mother, mm. a very strong mother. Mm. And she was just like, it's not the end. Sure. It's okay. Mm. This is not working out now. And it's unfortunate. Um, but we're not just going to sit. So she was just like, come, let's apply. What are we doing? Let's do whatever. Go do promotions. Go do this. She was mm. just literally like the engine fueling me and mm. pushing me. And I was like, I don't want to do this. And I was... Mm you know, very um, throwing my toys out my cot. Toddler, having Mm. a meltdown. Mm. Um, And eventually, you know, I've got myself That's why the good Lord sent you to. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Literally. (laughs) Awesome. See what it feels like? Literally. um, And and my mom, my mom literally just put me back together and and made sure that I just stood tall and didn't just sit at home and do nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you did Christian radio, Kingfisher FM. Yeah. Well, just time of my life. I was going like, to tell us I'm about listening Kingfisher to FM. rap on my way to the station. I'm just like, <laughs> you know, on my Lupe fiasco trying to. <laughs> Some bitches ain't shit. Like you know, um, it was it was such a crazy it was such a crazy time because um, yeah. it is actually one of the promotion jobs that got me that job. So sure. I was just literally. Um, serving drinks mm. and I happened to serve drinks to this one couple I just offered them something to drink I walked mm. away and then at the end of the night he was like hey I work at Kingfisher FM would mm. you please come and do a voice test I was like I have no idea what that is but sure I'll take your details went home told my mom my mom was like yeah I think it's a Christian radio station I was like Christian mm. nah fam she was just like dude oh, just but this go Christian hip hop she was just work. like just go just yeah. go you don't know where it could lead and now we're here mm. literally now we're here Mm. What is your, what, Shout out to my mom. What, what were your biggest learnings at Kingfisher FM? Um, 
the art of radio. Yeah. That's the first thing, the art of radio. But also how you can actually... You don't have to stay in the environment that you enjoy, right? Sure. So you don't always have to be all hip-hop, all street, all cool. You know, you can be that, mm -hmm. but also work and do well at a Christian radio station. You sure. don't have to, like, confine yourself or put yourself in a box and stay there. Mm -hmm. um, and so that taught me a lot about, you know, living in two completely different worlds, sure. right? So sure. you go on air. For, I mean, you can't swear in general sure. <laughs> when you're a broadcaster. Mm -hmm. But just being on air and changing that mindset and mm -hmm. learning a different de demographic, people who love God, who live God, who want to hear about God and Jesus 24-7 and the mm -hmm. things that you learn as well, you know, about church and the people that you experience um, and everything that I thought about people who are, and I don't want to be offensive, but like Jesus, team Jesus mm -hmm. all day, just fell apart. Mm -hmm. Everyone was just normal, just like me, uh, had their own things going on, mm -hmm. but just absolutely loved Jesus and wanted sure. to spread the word of God, which mm -hmm. is also fine. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. Um, but I got to, to learn how to do radio. I had a I had a six to nine show Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm. And I just got to learn people the art of not judging, actually. Sure. sure. And just experiencing. So typically at your most inspired by God and preachiest, typically what would a link by Loot Love on Kingfisher FM sound like? <laughs> <laughs> what would you talk about? <laughs> um, there was different things. I mean, if there was a, if there was a show coming up or if there was a, a song, <gasps> actually the craziest thing that ever happened to me was having to pray for someone on air. Oh, wow. Um, and I didn't know what to do because I was like, I mean, I pray, yeah. but not in this way. Sure. And you want me to pray mm. for you right now. Sure. And someone just needed... I guess, uh, help and support and love. And in that moment, I just thought, okay, well, I can't say I can't pray for you. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Exactly. Um, and so I prayed for them. And I think, um, I just, I don't know. I, I, I felt so uncomfortable in the beginning. Mm. But at the end, you know, they stopped crying. They thanked me so much. I don't know what I stopped or saved in that moment, but I just mm. thought, okay. So it's not always about who's... Uh, who can quote the Bible, sure, who goes sure. to church every single Sunday, mm. but it's just about being there for someone in a moment of need. And so it's a version of healing that you don't really think about. I think, you know, the work that we do as broadcasters is healing. You mm. are someone's friend. Mm. You are giving someone a solution. You are entertaining someone, making them happy in their lunch break. You're doing so much, but you don't realize that it's it's healing work. Mm. Um, and I guess, yeah, that brought it into perspective. A link? I can't even remember what a link looked like, but it definitely, <laughs> going to a gospel song did coming you, from a sermon talking about like, this church event. Did you ever like quote scriptures? And oh, definitely. I was yeah. on I was on Google. I was just like, okay, this is the worst of the day. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're unpacking. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it now. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. definitely Google Google was my friend. Yeah. Okay, so at least Tibo Touch is in good hands on Mondays. Let me you, tell you about Touch. Touch has... I, I had no idea how deeply spiritual Touch was. No, no. He, I had no idea. He's from a family of pastors. Yeah. Fourth so, generation. Yes. Yeah, so I'm, 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 my mind is blown. Sure. Um, and I'm actually very grateful because I think at this point in my life and with my relationship with God right now, I am very grateful to be in his presence because no, yeah, I have so much hands. to learn. Yeah. But, but also, I always say, you can say all you want to say about touch and his twang. If after spending just five minutes with touch and you're not inspired, yes. then you're dead. He is true. He is a vault of wisdom. Yeah. He is yeah. so yeah. wise. Yeah. He yeah. Also, he just gives you yes. information. Yes. You know, he's just always sharing and wanting to help you grow and giving you perspective. And it, it's so beautiful. And I think, you know, um, our show on Monday, or uh, experiencing it, uh, the replenishment. Sure. My, I was just like, I, you know, Monday is my favorite day. I'm home. But this, this just took it up a notch. Yes. I, I love this. I want to start my day like this. This is amazing. This really, really is amazing. So I think we're going to have a beautiful year and years to come. I think you guys want to kick ass. Yeah. You guys want to kick a lot of ass. Yeah. No, we definitely are. He's he's incredible. I, I'm really excited to work with him. He's an amazing leader. Sure. Um, so I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I say funny now, but never in the moment. Looking back at... Back then, your heart is broken. You can't write exams. You can't be an interior designer. Mm -hmm. You can't move to New York for three years. You can't live in Dubai for four years. You can't be this interior designer you wanted to be. Um, it was a rough patch that you went through. Mm. But you're here now. Mm. What would you like to say to that young lady back there? Um, 
because your plans were your plans, but yeah. clearly uh, God had other plans for you. Just the first thing I'd say is cry your heart out, it's okay. Because um, I, I was not a crier. <laughs> Just too thug, too cry. I'm too cool. I don't cry. Yeah, yeah. First, cry your heart out. And then the second thing is trust your intuition. Mm. Trust your intuition. Trust God. You are okay and you are loved. Mm. When you're 35, you'll know exactly why you had to experience everything that you did. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And um, also, I know you don't want kids, but you're going to have two. <laughs> At the same time. At the same. That's how much God is like, you are doing this. I don't care what your plans are. I'm going to give you two at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and 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 God does have a sense of humor. I mean, you you start you started at a Christian radio station. Literally. And now you're with Touch. Literally. I think if there is a thing that is always consistent is yeah. is that I always go back to God. I sure. always go back to the gospel. I always go back to to church in various forms. I always go back to to spirit. Um, no matter what the season is. Mm. Um, and I think I think the thing about it now that I, I want to learn is to not go back only when it's falling apart. Mm. To not only be in that place when everything is quiet. Mm. To always be in that place. To always be in spirit with God in prayer, whether up or down. To just be consistent in that space. Mm. That's that's the part that I I want a master right now. Yeah. Uh. You lost your brother, Lukanyiso, mm-hmm. twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. What conversations would you be having about your career right now? With him. Mm. Who? Uh, and the stage you're at in your life, this new season that you're referring to. Um. Sure. I think the first thing I'd want to say to him, well, I speak to him anyway because, mm. you know, I'm obviously out of my mind. Sure. But I think the first thing I would want to or say you're, is... Or you're in your mind, which is well, I'm in my mind. what we, we need to be in our minds often than not. Yeah. Uh, I think the first thing I'd say is I, I finally stop being scared, dog. Mm. Like I, mm. I stop worrying about what everybody thinks. Sure. Um, I stop being scared. Um... I really do still wish he was here, though. Mm. Um, mm. I wish he was here. I know he can see it. Sure. But I wish he could physically see it. Um, I'd say to him, I got an Apple radio, dog. <laughs> <laughs> We're South African. What you mean? <laughs> and then I still went back to Metro. Absolutely. <laughs> no beef. Um, yeah. But I'd, I'd... I just... And I know he's proud. Mm. I just... I would want him to know that... Um, I fell seven times, but I got up eight. Mm. And that is one thing I always wanted him to know, is that no matter how crazy it gets, no matter how uncomfortable it gets, no matter how confusing life gets, Mm. you know, um, you're always going to get back up. Mm. Um, And yeah, I did it my way. I I, I don't think I've moved through the industry like everybody else. Mm. I think also my journey has taken longer because I've just had different lessons to learn. Sure. But... um, I am here because I deserve to be here because I've worked to be here and now I understand that I I I I I'm holding my own in a very interesting way. I think for the longest time I wasn't sure. Mm. I wasn't really sure of my place yet. I didn't think I deserved to be here. Sure. Now I know for sure that I deserve to be here. Now I know for sure that I have a part to play. Now I know for sure that this is also part of my journey as a, as a healer. Mm. Mm. And I think one thing you mustn't you must never underestimate your impact because often it's your impact that shows up for you mm-hmm. when you get a second chance mm-hmm. or a third chance mm-hmm. or you get to get up an eighth time. And for us tall people, getting up is work or eight. <laughs> when we fall, to work. Just get up for us tall people is work. And, 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 and that's why I often preach that whatever you do, have impact yeah because that impact will get you your next gig yeah and i think Th- that impact will get you a gig three years later when you don't have a gig literally literally and and i 
you know you want to have impact and sometimes you don't know how yes you're going to make that impact mm. you just you know you're waking up you're just being you mm. um this is how you choose to style yourself this is what you want to sound like on mm. air mm. this is the vision that you have that nobody else can see and yeah. you you can barely understand it but you just feel that it's right mm. so sometimes you don't know you don't see it um and so you get out of it and i yes. mean i think with me i'm only starting to really see now yes um but also because i really had to take myself out of um a lot of the time i wanted the validation from everyone in the industry oh yes i wanted the props i yes. wanted the you know the, you the you, awards you, i wanted to love yeah you. i want you to you know tell yeah. me how good i am yeah. um and then i stepped away and i realized that that's that's not how it works sure. my validation comes from god mm. my validation comes from my ancestors my validation comes from my kids my validation comes from the people that see me on a normal day and i don't have to put anything on for yes. right so that's yes. where i fill my cup so that i can pour into the space and work so mm. now that i understand that i'm just like okay mm. right mm. now i know how to move and now i know what to do and with that impact i'm i'm just happy it's there but on an ego level sure. it's okay i've done it i've proved mm. my point mm. now let's just move on and do the next day mm. it's okay mm. i don't have to hold it over my head and be like oh this is what you did this is who you were yeah yeah give your props give yourself props every day mm. Mm. i'm just ready for the next thing now last year was a rough year for you mm. like you said but you're also mourning the loss of your brother mm-hmm. where did you go for strength i prayed mm. i definitely prayed uh you know god 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 is uh god is god is hilarious um so we obviously had lockdown and we got shut down um and i got to spend lockdown with my brother and i didn't know that that was the last year that i'm spending with them naturally um but it was also the first year of my girl's life so it was quite it was quite something um and and yeah he passed on when yeah he passed on a year and they turned one Mm. Yeah, when they turned one, he left us. And between God and the girls, that's where my strength is. I feel like God gave me those girls because he knew if I didn't have them, I mm. wouldn't have survived losing my brother. Mm. So my strength literally came from being with them, mourning with them, sure. uh, keeping them alive. Because <laughs> you really can't just shut down, you know? I was going to say, little people give you purpose. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I had support. Uh, I had an amazing, amazing nanny. She was really riding with us. She was down with us. My mom was there. Mm. And my friends were also there. Sure. Um, but it, between God and my girls, that's just literally where mm. it all came from. And I also just felt like I have to do everything I said I would do sure. when he was here, mm. now that he's not here. Mm. Yeah. We're running out of time, but before we let you go, please tell us your relationship with the book The Alchemist. I think that was my first introduction to I guess everything outside of what we told about God and and, and spirituality. Mm. Uh that book actually between my mom my brother and I is a very 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 important book um and just opening your mind up mm. um in in into i guess how you think about life how you mm. see yourself the mm. things that you trust your intuition the mm. omens that you see mm. listening to 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 nature to seeing the signs around you um it's a very important book i'll always go back to it <laughs> i mean i left it with my brother mm. um but yeah it was the first i guess book to introduce me to a life outside of what we've been taught in church mm. what we've been taught about god um and and the first book to make me question a lot of things about mm. you know intuition feeling understanding seeing purpose yeah and purpose mm. yeah no, no, i ask you about it because it's close to my heart because when when it came out i think i was about 13 14 mm. and i remember seeing it at our school library yeah. and reading it literally changed the rest of my life yeah it changed the rest of my life how i perceive myself mm-hmm. how i perceive the rest of the world mm-hmm. and how i show up in the world exactly and i don't think i'd be the man i am now had i not read that book back then yeah but you know nothing is a coincidence you mm. always at the right place at the right time um and i guess yeah i needed that introduction cuz look mm. at my life now mm. the things mm. i've had to walk through the things i've had to survive mm. the places the rooms i've been in um it's actually been quite beautiful, I think. Mm. As crazy as it was, it's mm. been beautiful. Mm. Mm. 
you had to go through it. Yeah. To also understand that you can go through it. Yeah, and thank God I grew through it. Yeah. Because I also yeah. could have chosen to just stay. Yeah. You know, uh, a victim, stay Woe's in me. whatever. Yeah, just I'm, fall apart I'm, all the I'm time, the be depressed, God and yeah. yeah. But I chose the work. Absolutely. And good work you do. That's good. why you're back. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> She's back, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Last word to your fans, your supporters, people that have loved your work. Um, thank you for always being so kind and mm. loving. And thank you for being patient with me and giving me the space to go away mm. and just welcoming me with open arms. Mm. Um, I'm looking forward to this ride with you guys. I think it's going to be nice. A suggestion? And it will help you deal with the separation anxiety with the girls. Mm-hmm. Have a five minute feature with the girls on the radio show that way then you're with them at work yeah I think they, yeah. Might, they, they might as well start their media journey now yeah uh, use it don't use it yeah I mean they, they've already started at home I've yeah. got a little DJ in the house absolutely <laughs> every time I come home with those headphones they are busy they're talking on a mic and yeah. I think, I the think most. integrate them into their radio show you'll thank me later I'll definitely do that I want to look back in five years when they're turning ten and say we watched you guys grow on the radio. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's something beautiful about watching someone blossom into this personality. Yes. There was a child Absolutely. when you first saw them. Absolutely. There's, I'm definitely going to do that. There's an opportunity right there. I'm definitely going to do yeah. that. They're going to love that. <laughs> Lute, thank you so much for hanging out with thank us. Thank you for having me. Thanks for your resilience, your strength, for being the strong, inspiring, unrelenting woman that you are. Thank you very much. God-loving, God-fearing. Thank you. I appreciate being here. And who understands who the hell she is? Never forget who the hell you are. You can't touch me now. Now. Shoo. How much I have. Ladies and gentlemen, Loot Love is about to leave the building. Easter is done with and autumn is here, which means a certain government utility might bring a bit of darkness back into our lives. Despite assuring us, it won't. However, just because there might be less light doesn't mean you should lose yours completely. So wishing you a bright outlook, warm vibes, and a wow week ahead. Shout out to Amp Studios. That's where we do our show from. Africa Podcast Network. Uh, thanks for having us. Pezulu Works, Cinematography. We love your work. Artist The Flow Fraser for all of the imaging. Our guests, Kidiboni Molaudzi and Loot Love. Shout out to our creative producer, Kruvesh Mohan. And our show producer, Kilesomoti Saking. Email us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. Till next week, have a great week in spite of yourselves. Yeah,